This week on the podcast, we're going to give you a little bit of insight and some lessons learned from the coalface of sometimes making mistakes and then advising you on how to avoid making those mistakes if you are going to start something new. So if you think you're jumping into a new form of training, there's an event you want to you want to train for, there's something on the horizon that is not what you've done before, but you're going to go and use your current athleticism for a new challenge. Jack and I are going to share some experiences on what we have done recently and experienced recently. And this is actually spins us back, Jacko, to how we actually started teaching calisthenics is we made all the mistakes and then got better at coaching and coaching calisthenics because we knew what didn't work rather than having the, 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 the perfect recipe of what does work. So we yeah. are valiantly taking it on upon ourselves to be guinea pigs <laughs> in our own research studies and we're going to share some of those results with you today. I'm, I'm also, you're making me think, my mind is now thinking um, back through the years ago and, when did I also make very similar mistakes around doing something? You know, I've got a good, I've got a, a, a nice example I will potentially share at the beginning Ooh, um, of of the you podcast tease. that you're. That, no, no, you're you're quite like you'll you'll, <laughs> you'll just laugh uh, because it's funny. Um, but there's some lessons. There's some lessons to be learned. So one of the lessons is that actually, uh, for myself, you'll see that actually it can take a number of times before I actually will learn the lesson. But we'll yeah, get more I- into that. I think that's a life journey for me during the podcast yeah um but before we do we just want to uh, thank the podcast sponsors spartan we are very excited because in uh, just a few days time at the weekend we are doing our spartan race not our first obstacle course race but it is our first version of the spartan variety which i'm excited to do many burpees and throw lots of spears <laughs> and all the other amazing nice things we're going to do um we are uh taking part in the 21k beast because you know we are beasts um which may be a mistake anyway um <laughs> something to something to but there are a whole host over the whole weekend in the Midlands taking place, everything from 5K up to that 21K. Um, you can get a free place, and this is one of this is your last chance to join us at the weekend. We are doing the uh, the Saturday morning, but you can. There's a group I know there's a group of people doing the 10K on the Sunday. Um, all you need to do is get involved with a little bit of social proof of your training for it. So getting Spartan ready means you're going to take a picture or a video of you doing something Spartan-like in your training. Um, for me, that's just standing in a spare of pedos looking fairly Spartan-y. Um, and then tag Spartan, so at Spartan, hashtag Spartan race, and then also tag the scorecast Senex. And to ensure that we see it and can validate those uh, those three things, uh, DM it, send it to us in a direct message on Instagram, and we will then be able to send you the code. There are a few still left. There are a few days left. Come and get involved. Come see us at the weekend, and we look forward to seeing you there. Right, so if you're going to take these lessons of, on board of how to start something new in the right, intelligent, and strategic way, it may be a little bit late for you if you're going to jump on a Spartan race, <laughs> but hopefully we'll see you'll have, you'll have a great experience. So let's dive into this week's podcast, guys. We're looking forward to this one. There's definitely some, some lessons that we're going to share with you, so let's sit back and enjoy us talking about lessons we've learned along the way of starting new things. Roll that jingle. Listen, players, <laughs> you're listening to the Movement, Strength and Play podcast by the School of Calisthenics. Here are your hosts, Tim and Jacko. So, Timbo, um, recently, I'm going to I'm going to ask you a question, but then I'm going to give you my little like funny anecdote. That it just <laughs> for some reason it popped into my head. Not anecdote. It just popped into my head of like, crikey, yeah, no, I remember when I did that. So well, I did it the way around. Um, do the anecdote first, and then ask me the question. Uh, uh, okay, tell me a right. story. So, so doing something. <laughs> so I remember. Do do you remember um, uh, a very fast individual called Usain Bolt? Uh, yes. Yeah, and he was a Puma. Um, athlete mm. and i remember being on holiday um so this was like a break in pre-season every we used to get um six or seven weeks off uh from rugby where we just literally like time off like don't do anything and some of us would do a little bit of a, a naughty bit of pre preseason, get ready for <laughs> pre- which potentially was essentially needed because literally like day one preseason was so horrendous that it was like yeah i feel i think i need to do a little bit of prep anyway i um as a fan of Usain Bolt, I bought a pair of Puma um, 
trainers whilst on holiday, but they were very, they were a long, 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 long way away from barefoot shoes from like the vivas that we love now were they real ones um, or were they just something when you, when you say you bought something probably i was like <laughs> yeah. from some guy down by the beach yeah no, and, I, and i got a nice watch yeah got a, 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 a folex um no they, no and, no they, 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 sarong. Oh, <laughs> do you know I what think, a sarong is <laughs> yeah found a picture of my dad in a sarong remember when david beckham was from anyway um the uh <laughs> <laughs> I think they were proper pumas, but the the mistake I made with them being something new was was probably a couple of things going on my head. Because I was wearing puma, I thought it was going to be really fast, like you said. But obviously, <laughs> came into preseason on day one, having not really used these trainers whilst running, and they were a much th- they weren't zero drop or anything like that, but they were a much 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 mm. smaller, thinner, lighter shoe, and the uh, a much smaller. Uh, pad or a heel raise um and we were doing some I'm trying to think how far, i think we were doing 150s on tarmac and i felt great like felt really good felt like usain bolt and i was like just smashing it um and then the next day calves in bits calves like absolute rocks yeah and at first i was like I couldn't even work it out what it was, and then I was like, then the sort of uh, the penny dropped. Um, there's a whole host of things going on in there uh, potentially, but that was um, stupidity. But it happens. I did the same thing. I used to do, before Vivo. I was like, I used. To, I've been wearing Innovates for years before. Like, so I got into the bear or the minimalist yeah. shoe a long time ago. Um, started off actually with a pair of nike freeze 3.0s but then the nike free the first version of the nike free was amazing it was super light used to wear them to coach and they were brilliant and then because i think so many that was around the beginning of that minimalist footwear kind of trend but then i think so many people were getting stress fractures and having real kind of the same issues of buying minimalist shoes going out to run then the market moved away from minimalist shoes to the point where it is now where you have to go to a very specialist provider like yeah. vivo or like some of these other guys to actually go and get a proper pair of minimalist shoes because there was a time when when all the major brands were doing them um but i did the same thing i remember was being in south africa and we car and i went for a run and i went in a, in a pair of these um they had a three mil drop from heel to toe and we ran on concrete down by, you've done that coastal run down by, like, yeah, it's yeah. beautiful, nice. right? But, like, literally for a week afterwards, my calves were in sweat. I couldn't walk downstairs without being in pain. They were so <laughs> sore. Um, and it's that shock reaction, right? So let's, like, weave this through into the kind of the subject of the conversation today. Because that's a very simple example of, like, yo, I just bought a pair of shoes and go for a run. I'd go for a run all the time. But not necessarily always anticipating or um, giving respect to the novel stimulus that you are entering into and how your body is going to be able to handle that stimulus. Yeah. Because you often like, it's not like what you, what, in that situation, what we probably should have done is like, well, I've got these new shoes. I'm going to go and run in them. I'm just going to go, I don't know, half a, half a K, just five, four hundred meters. Yeah. What you did was probably yeah. 10 rounds of 150s on concrete. <laughs> and you're like, yeah. at speed, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the other thing with it, that's a bit of a we can i just want to mention it but we can sort of then park it because it's too big a conversation but i asked myself the question of like yes not adapted but also what were my other trainers hiding of some inefficiencies in my potential running mechanics effectively like having a big cushiony heel meaning that i can and that's been the big thing for me that's like cha- for having to understand and change to a a, a, a more people would say like a more natural running mechanics to be able to run in a more natural way as in like a less supported shoe. We need to like get haven't had trainers for that long, have we? We need to get someone from Vivo on for a guest, don't we? We can talk about that. Yes, I, well, I'll get Ben. He's the, the, the running get him coach. On. That's a great so that's, I was literally going to go and dive into that. I thought that's a better conversation to have when somebody actually knows what they're talking about, which is what I would call <laughs> yeah, like we, we, we my guess. interpretation of what I think is going on. Um, the context, a little slightly deeper context for this conversation, and I put it on one of my, um, and my Instagram um, dynamic shoulders Instagram last or this week sometime and Jack had seen it and I got rinsed by Lucy Campbell who is a CrossFit athlete at the CrossFit box that I now train at who is going to the games so she's like 
incredible athlete, background in open water swimming. Um, she's been in CrossFit like a f- oh, not that long, and she's like she's doing really well. So I was in the gym and I was like complaining, not complaining because I try not to do that, but I was re- commenting on what my, how my body has responded as a result of starting to train at a CrossFit box and therefore having more exposure to the sport of fitness, as they like to call it. Um, and I was halfway through the, my sentence of saying, well, since I started CrossFit, and she piped up and she was like. Tim, you don't even do CrossFit. And I was like, well, that's a bit harsh. But yes, I, compared to you who does properly does CrossFit, I don't really do CrossFit. I dabble in, well, she says she dabbles, but I, I really do dabble in and out of CrossFit workouts. But the point is, so I wouldn't say that I, I definitely don't train CrossFit like every session. I'll pick and choose a few workouts during the week and we can talk about what that might look like. But my the experience that my body has had since starting CrossFit from going from strictly bodyweight training and the other underlying thing that i i don't know that whether this is people are, are appreciating this in the world of fitness at the moment but we came from two years of really minimal movement and not walking that much or running that much maybe depending on what you did during lockdown or the coronavirus pandemic um so starting something new and then feeling as a 41 year old as i am now so we've just been I have my 41st birthday at the point of starting CrossFit. What the, what the toll of a new exercise team is, which is pretty high intensity, has taken. Yeah, no, it, it intrigued me. One, well, I guess the, it intrigued me. And one of the things that I actually really liked about it was to go, well, let's, have, let's open up that conversation because I think that someone listening will... The mess, well, one of the messages that I was thinking it was encouraging was like going like... I can go and do this thing over here, but I can also do a bit of this over here and I can pick and choose what I want to do and, and be, uh, and, and, and do the things that are, that are serving me. And then the, the, as we had that, com- as that conversation started off air, it was like, um, starting to become quite interesting of how you were saying your body has responded to doing that new thing. Um, and this is with all of your experience of having trained many people, but also in many different ways yourself. And for a long time, um, and the age thing is probably something that I hadn't thought that we would potentially talk about, but I listened to a really good podcast yesterday with Laird Hamilton, um, where there's some stuff that I think would be quite interesting to just on the age side of it as well to, to yeah. that we can mention. Yeah. I think so give thing, us a, yeah, give us yeah, your... so the, the, how, I mean, I've covered before in the podcast about why I started training at CrossFit Box, so we're not going to recover a review of that, but the, a part of the reason was around experiencing something new. I wanted just to kickstart my training a little bit. I felt that off the back of lockdown, um, there was an area of my training that I was missing, which was around that conditioning component. So what I wanted to do was also go and learn a bit more about the sport of CrossFit because um, my, my training has often been a research for just understanding more to make me a better coach. So there's a whole area of fitness, which was a huge part that I'd never had an exposure to. And I also didn't feel like it was fair for me to have an opinion about CrossFit without actually having experienced it. Yeah. So that it came from a place of maybe just trying to be as authentic as possible with my opinions and also coaching practice. So I went down and the first thing I want to put out there is I love it, right? Like there's some really, really good stuff around it. So this is not a negative on it, but there are, I'm still extremely selective about what type of CrossFit I do, what workouts I do, trying to respect one, what I think is sensible and intelligent programming from a strength and condition perspective, but two, what is also the appropriate level of programming intensity for my body. So if, for example, there's a workout that's got quite a lot of heavy snatching coupled with other overhead movements, I'm probably not going to do that one because my shoulders just from previous dislocations and issues that I've had in the past and the hyper laxity, um, if we say my capsule, my shoulders means that I find snatch a really difficult movement. And it's not something that I want to do when I'm tired, um, because there's just too much potential margin for error or the risk isn't worth the reward. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. so there's often, so the types of workouts, are obviously the gymnastics ones are always going to be attractive. But the thing that I did when I went into it was I, get, I wanted to get reacquainted with barbell work. So that was a big part of my training before calisthenics. It had been a big part of what we'd done with um, our strength and conditioning careers and with athletes that we were working with. But I hadn't done a lot of lower body barbell-based work, no Olympic lifting for quite a long time. So I dived back into it. And when you start Olympic lifting, you then start to realize, okay, if I want to get better numbers on this and I need to go and build some basic strength because you can't clean a weight unless you can front squat it so you're gonna have to go yep. and get some front squat strength back up so I dive back into some bilateral lower body based work quite quickly 
And this is where the mistake is that I made. And I think coaches across the world would do this because we are professionals in the industry and we understand so much about training. You really don't want to do what we do. Like from a perspective, I would never really have advised somebody who's an athlete under my responsibility to have done what I did, which was like jump straight in and just get after it. Like there was no real grade exposure to the new stimulus. Now, the other thing that's like difficult for me is because my range of motion is naturally, my body moves well. So I don't really ever get that tight. So I don't feel restricted in range of motion. I can squat like to the floor, as to grass, any day of the week, any time. And that means that I often yeah. don't get warning signs when my mobility is limited. So what will happen is because the joints are pretty mobile, I'll then find that what, what's happened since is that because of going under that additional load, new movement patterns, getting after it pretty hard, um, just my, my quads just got chewed up. And as a result, I've experienced some knee pain as a result of in starting this new stimulus. Now that's not CrossFit's fault. In, as a sense apart from there's a lot of lower yeah, body kind yeah. of squat based movements in it it's the intensity that i went into it at. Yeah, you could have done anything at that intensity all of a sudden and yeah. yeah yeah and what i didn't do was like i was quite focused on what was happening around my shoulders going in i was like right, okay lots more overhead barbell based movements i haven't done in a while so a lot of my injury prevention prep work was targeted to the upper body yeah, yeah. lower body didn't feel tight and didn't feel restricted so i didn't really do that much about it but then all of a sudden started to get knee pain and when I go now to look at the knees and go, well, what's going on there? My quads and IT band areas, like there's lots of kind of restrictions in there. I can still squat full through full range of motion, but I'm finding that I'm feeling like some pain in some sort of movement. So it's just now a process of going back and understanding, like the reflective process on that is like, what happened? What did I do wrong? What have I got to do to fix it? But then also throw on top of that, like, I don't want to be the guy who's like, oh, 40 years old is a bit more difficult because I just think you tell yourself this story, which is just not going to help you for the next 20 years. Like, I've got to think like I did when I was sort of 25, 30 years old in terms of just dive in and get after whatever you want to do. But the reality is that needs some more strategic planning because it does feel like it's harder for my body to, to recover than it used to. Yeah, for sure. On top of that, so this is all kind of multifaceted, the things that we can pick yeah. apart. I've got a... 16 month old baby that doesn't sleep so the best number one yeah. recovery priority in my life would be eight hours a night of heart of high quality sleep i haven't had that for 18 months and i haven't had that since i started crossfit so now you've got this kind of this complex picture yeah. these are all the variables in play age new stimulus a underlying athletic ability which meant that i could access crossfit at quite a high level because i'd done a lot of the stuff before in, in, in isolation yeah. lack of recovery time all this kind of and, and and not focusing enough on the preparation of what i thought my body needed because my attention was elsewhere so pick all of that cacophony apart jacko as to what your thoughts are um the the one thing that i think is really beneficial to oh i'd like to hone in because i think it's relevant to me as well but it will be to a lot of the listeners is that like that age thing and it being a double-edged sword of being like sometimes i i agree with you and lots of people will as well going like there's a mindset element to it that if i go oh it's because now i'm 40 like blah 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 and then i tell myself this story that then plays out and 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 I, and, it, and it's and it negatively affects me so then a lot of us a lot of us buy into that because you see someone you see some older dude and you're like well he's I mean, crikey, I was at campsite the other day and seeing this guy, not that he was doing anything, but he looked about 60 and I asked him if, he'd, if he was retired. And he was like, retired? I'm 82. <laughs> I was like, crikey, good on you. Like, he was, do you know what I mean? He was, he was, he was looking well. Um, and you see, so you see someone older doing something than, that you think you'd like to be able to, and you're like, okay, well, it's, that, is, um, that is helping me to believe that, like, age isn't this thing that has to like just be def detrimental to me but i think then the the mistake we then can fall into is like go right yeah it's just it, it it's it's just a mindset and i'm going to attack this like i did when i was 25 or when i was 12 or whatever it is and then that is a mistake because we are um disrespecting that aging process and the fact that you are older and as you are older you're also then more experienced so you cannot make the mistakes that you used to make and the take the enthusiasm 
of the 25 year old to go after it and take that and do but also put that enthusiasm into your prep and your recovery so if it is a case of like oh okay when i foam roll my calves a bit more um my flipping ankle feels loads better or whatever or the whatever the thing is put your enthusiasm into that rather than just being trying to treat your 40 year old self as your 25 year old self like i'm the same like i just don't i know that i don't recover the same that doesn't mean i can't do the same things i'm trying to do stuff that i've never done before mm. but i have to respect that the process you go through to make that happen might be a bit different yeah and that's not necessarily a bad thing at all yeah i think the other thing is just, as you were talking reflecting i think of another other, other people in my network community school of calisthenics um part of, the, yeah, part of our school of calisthenics kind of group of, of community is we, i think about people when you, when you're 40 you've got so much more mostly going on in your life and stresses that were way different to when you were 25 or 30 at a different yeah. level like there's again my situation is business family life kids like the, the stresses that come with all of that all kind of add up and i think we don't i think that that 25 year old athlete mindset of just yeah i'm just going to train like that's and because you kind of learned your training practices yeah. went through this formative years where you didn't have a huge amount of stress really most people in your life in comparison to kind of having young families and, and whatever else people have got going on from my personal perspective so you've i think it's just you, you kind of you've learned how to train over those years and then all of a sudden you're trying to do the same thing with a way more like stress load or your stress bucket is way more full and does that kind of have an impact on your performance and recovery? Well, for sure. Like, if we've got athletes in a performance system who had got, like, uh, doing the same thing. Like, we, basically, with athletes, we like, just just train. Don't do anything else apart from train. Don't get a job. Like, oftentimes, it's like, just don't stretch yourself too thin. Don't do too many media appearances because it's all going to impact on recovery. Yet, yeah. when the, the type A person comes in and goes, well, I want to do a 60-hour work week. I've got two young kids. I want to be at home for my partner or my my um to be a father to my kids or whatever it might be that people have got going on and you're like and then i want to train like that as well and i want to do these new things and i definitely don't want this to be like i'm i'm sitting here now talking about this going if i was to do that again what would i do differently and i think that's kind of like that that's really where i want the takeaway to come, yeah. to come from so what are the lessons yeah. rather than just me complaining about the fact that my knees now hurt when i didn't used to <laughs> um, but the reality is I said to Jacko made me laugh before and it's like if I try to do a sissy squat now I feel like my knees will explode like they're, they're not great but one two sets in like if I could take some time to warm them up then they're, they're fine again like I can start to move yeah. and, I, and it's a process now and the, the cost of what I did and the, uh, the whole kind of like situation I've explained is I now need to lie on the floor in the evenings before I go to bed and do some mobility work which I would never have normally had to do before not because I lack range of motion, but because the tissue is chewed up and it's tight and there's yeah. a lot, and it feels better when I, when I do that kind of release work, that self-massage um, practice. So I think the thing for me is just when you get, if you are listening to this and I don't want to make this like, a, oh, you're 40, so slow down. You're 40 plus, just be a bit more strategic. I, I feel now that my reason for training and what I want from a capacity, strength, movement perspective um, from a health perspective is now all about the next 20 years of my life the next 40 years of my life hopefully it's mm. not about when i was like and i think it's different because you know, i don't really have a comparison you know when i was 25 it was rugby 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 all in the sport of fitness was never a thing at that age so i see people yeah. now basically treating functional fitness and crossfit and other things like i treated rugby it was and then they look amazing yeah. as a result yeah, of it. Yeah. that's their sport they're not rocking up with the lads on a Saturday afternoon and getting smashed about on the pitch. That's what I used to do. Um, so I think it's now just thinking like, well, what does this next, and you're not training to be in the best shape of your life anymore. I don't think that you might get that. Like you, you're going to do something which you've never done before. You might look great. It's not that you can't achieve that. But for me, if that comes at the cost of being in pain or not being able to move well, then you've got the priorities wrong because you let's be honest you're on you're 40 your testosterone is peaked like science will tell us that we are going to now degenerate to a point and we need now need to focus for me at least is how do you offset that to the best of your ability i want to be that 80 year old that looks 60 and moves like he's 50 you know like yeah, how do still i go do and that? climb a mountain or whatever yeah, be, it is. because we've had That's kids late I'm, I'm, when i'm when i am is 40 when she's the same age as me i'm gonna be 80 if i'm still here 
So the experiences that I want to have when I'm 70, when she's between 30 and 40, like I, that's important to me. So yeah. it's definitely now taking that generous approach and joining a sport like CrossFit at this age has been eye-opening. And my last point before I throw this off, Jacko, to you is when I look around the gym, right, and sometimes in the workout, I, I often go and do open gym workouts, which is in the same space, but I'm basically doing my own thing if I'm not going to go and jump in on a, on a class workout. And they throw some mobility stuff in, like shin boxes or like some hip mobility, you know, like sitting that 90-90 from going from side to side, the stuff that you've done like mm-hmm. loads of, squatting against the wall. Literally, let's say 10% of the class will be able to do it and not do it well. So they do CrossFit to a high level, but they don't move well right. under different circumstances. So I look in at that and go, okay, you are missing a piece. You've got all the high intensity work, but you can't yeah. do basic hip mobility drills. Like that's going to be a problem at some point, I would say, or at least if it's not a problem, it's, a, it's an attribute which you're going to lose. There's definitely that use it or lose it. So I think that's kind of, yeah, just think about that longer game and what, what that looks like is you've got time to, to gradually expose yourself and just, like you don't go from zero to hero if you've not lifted barbells for five, six years in two or three weeks. You don't need to. And arguably just... Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. There's probably loads more. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop talking so you can... Yeah. You, no, you, no, there you is... You have a go, Jacko. <laughs> <laughs> there's, no, there's, there's loads in there. There's loads in there. There's... Um, I sort of... that Depending on what you're doing, it has quite a big impact on, like, your mindset towards it. So when I was playing pro rugby, I was trying to be the best rugby player I could be. That was, like, my job, and that's what I wanted to do. And I wasn't thinking about how i remember choosing not to have an operation on my hand because it meant that i could play sooner than if i had an operation which would have meant that i didn't have a d- crap finger now for the rest of my life I, I made a short-term decision because my mindset at that time was was short-term and whether i think that is good bad or not is is not necessarily my point my point is like as i've then come away from that or I feel like at least I had a purpose in that, like I was, that was the thing that I was doing. Whereas now that there isn't a thing. So it's like, well, and I think it's something that just happens as you get older, you tend to think a little bit more about the future and you go, yeah, I want to be able to like, I want to be able to do stuff. I heard Leonard Hamilton on this podcast say, he said something really good. He was like, when you, I think he was working a lot with like professional athletes and he was like, when you're a professional athlete, it was like train in a way and have routines that mean that when you're finished doing your sport, you can go and do the things you want to do. Mm. Um, and I wish someone had told me that when I was playing because, and it, whatever someone's thing is now, just like, is the thing you're doing now, is it serving you right now and for the future or is it serving you just right now? Because whatever the thing is in the short term if it's say to, like you mentioned about like you know something might be you might look the best you've ever done but however you whatever you create it's still not going to be like that when you're 70 because you're gonna be wrinkly when you're 70 or whatever the thing do you know what I mean it's like it isn't going to stay anyway so um there's there's an element for me where it's very or it's becoming clearer and more simple in that the only way you experience this life is you have to have your body in order to go and experience this life. Um, And so if we don't look after it, it impacts your ability to do things and therefore experience um, this life. And, you know, we're not saying that you can't go and do things and do different things or new things. Like in less than two months, I'm going to try and do this uh, Ring of Fire Ultra Marathon, which is 135 miles in three days, I do all of my running in my bare, my Vivo barefoots now, which is something that, like I mentioned before, I couldn't even run in some Puma <laughs> things. Mm. Um, and so that's different. That's new and that's massively challenging. And there's a conversation to go like, is it going to be, is that actually a good thing to do for your health? Probably not. It's probably too extreme. But um, I'm trying to do it in a way that um, is that there's longevity in it. I like being outside and exploring the natural world. So like going on trail running, like helps serve that. And can I, is that more, am I more likely to be able to carry on doing that as I get older? Yeah. And what does, what does it look like 
as you get really old, well, it just looks like a slow version of it, and eventually it's walking, but it's like, oh, yeah, I can walk up Snowden still because I used to run up it when I was 50. Do you know what I mean? Like, when you're mm. 70, you can still walk up it. It's like, because it's just a, 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 an easier version of the, of the same thing. Um, I think that's one of the things that I've really in, like, valued from the experience of, of going into a brand new trading environment with different people trading in different ways. Like I think that is a, a really enriching thing to do to go and surpri- surround yourself with other forms of fitness and training because it is definitely shines a light back on where your weaknesses are. But this is where yeah. I think the, the education or the self-awareness piece needs to come in of going, well, what, are, what is important in that with, for me? So the, the idea for me now of going, well, I went there for a conditioning piece largely got kind of pulled into thinking about what my strength deficits might be so crossfit has got lots of bilateral movements in there it's all two feet on the floor at the same time that's not a massively functional crossover really for life for running for climbing Mm. mountains for that sort of stuff i want to be able to do so i don't look to crossfit classes now for my strength development for the lower body because i know it's gonna be very bilateral and if i do go into a crossfit workout that's got that and i'm just gonna go easy because i'm not gonna go and try and set any records my own training, when I do anything lower body now, is largely going to be either be some hip hinge stuff like deadlifts and potentially that might be involved some singular progressions. But it'll all be a focus around lunge-based work because it's loaded based lunge work is going to be the best transfer, transfer over to life activities that I want to be able to do in the most part because you can get strong on a single leg and if anybody's ever come across Mike Boyle, he will be like 100% on this, like split squat rather than back squat. Like nine, like... He's very kind of like passionate about that subject. But yeah. you have, there's a whole kind of thing around this bilateral strength deficit where, but actually, you get good on one leg, you're going to be good on two legs, or you're going to be good enough on two legs, particularly in functional tasks. There's obviously going to be case specifics where back squat is important, but for most people, you would spend more benefit being on a single leg based movement. So I think it is that thing of going, so now I want to keep the conditioning piece. It's shining a light on where I want my lower body strength to be because that strength is going to be one of the most determining, the fundamental determining factors on your life quality as an old age person. Can you get out of a chair? Can you get off the floor? That is a strength issue. <clears throat> so get strong, stay strong. And I think where I'm looking at it now is going like bring these new stimuluses in, but it comes better from a place, from a place where you've got a general like rounded capacity. And one of my reflections of yeah. where we were in calisthenics multiplied by the factor in lockdown is it potentially came a little bit too specific, very good at one particular thing. And a lot of my training time went towards that. But then mm. where I'm kind of at now is going, I still love calisthenics and that being the major focus of my upper body based training for all the reasons we've talked about yeah. to, the, to death. But there's these other bits that I want in there as well. I want to kind of have that, that component. And I think that, that for me has been the, the, the sort of the real major positive to come out of it. And I now need to go and do the hard work to address some of the things that my body is currently telling me. And that will take some, that'll be frustrating and it'll take some time. But unless I do anything, it's not going to get better by not doing anything about it if I continue to train. So I've yeah. got myself in this little situation yeah. in now. What I've got to do is be proactive about getting out of it. Yeah. We actually answered the question about starting new things. I don't know if we have. Um, I think so. I think new things, sort of, just to, to summarise, like new things can be can be great opportunities to learn. New things um, are going to expose certain weaknesses that potentially you need to work on. It's going to give you the opportunity to see how other people do things that you get to learn from as well. Mm. So there's all those amazing elements to it, and it's a nice little challenge for yourself potentially. With, or where the caveat is or the consideration is like what uh, additional processes might you need to put in place to ensure that you're successful and still robust and resilient coming out of having started it is probably where my mind is at with it yeah good 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 good, good conclusion i think that is it knowing yourself knowing yeah. what your kind of what baggage do you bring to the table um, I knew all the things That's that it. I needed to know before I started. I just chose to ignore them. And there's an ego point there, right? I'm a strength and conditioning coach. Of course I yeah. can do this. Like, mm, yeah. It's to like a, so. a, yeah, like a, a, a very, very, very simple calisthenics one would be like, never done any handstands before. Start doing loads of handstands. Don't do any uh, wrist like prep mm-hmm. or, or wrist mobility. And if you've got issues with your wrist, you're like, oh, cracking my wrist hurt after doing like three weeks of handstands and I'm doing handstands every day. But I'm loving it. And, and it's like, yeah, yeah, but just consider the fact that like you just need to do, there's a little bit of work to to do yeah. in the in the preparation. Hence why we have such a big emphasis on the movement preparation part of all the all the programs inside the uh, School of Calisthenics memberships. Yeah. No wonder we must look. 
never done false grip before, going to train it three times a week. Oh, my elbow hurts. <laughs> like, yeah. how many times have people done that before? There's so many cases of that. Just little, so just take the time, new stimulus, build into it, play the long game. We talk about that. I feel we still about that a lot these days. Play the long game. Yeah. Life is a long game. Life isn't a short game, is it, Timbo? Hopefully. Hopefully. That's the plan. That's what this is all in the uh, pursuit <laughs> yeah, yeah. of. <laughs> so. Yeah, I really, really, really want to be old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to have the choice to be old. I think that's a thing. Um, yeah. Right, let's wrap it up. So we hope that has been a little bit insightful. Some a little bit of just keeping things real and raw and sharing the, the experiences we're going through. Sometimes I think, particularly in the social media um, world, you often just see the highlights of how well everybody else is doing. Know that behind the fronts of that, there are other things going on and people are facing challenges we yeah. just don't want to talk about being injured on social media because it doesn't make it look that, look that good but the reality is we all pick these niggas up what you do with that is then the important part of um, of getting yourself back to where you want to be with your training and life awesome sign us off Timbo so until next time keep exploring your physical potential with movement strength and play class dismissed Thank you.